Hi guys, I'm Charles and welcome to my channel. This week is somewhat slightly different from the previous content in that it's not Warhammer or Games Workshop content. This is actually going to be a new miniature system, the A Song of Ice and Fire tabletop miniature game, or as I just, for ease of phrasing, Game of Thrones, because that's what most people will know it as from the TV show. This is a rank and flank miniature tabletop game, and I recently picked up the Stark vs Lannisters Start Collector, Start Collecting, Starter Bundle, whatever you want to call it, and wanted to do something a little bit more interesting than just red and gold Lannisters. They have lines on a lot of their shields and sigils, and as it happens, my family's coat of arms also has a lion. It's going to be shown here. So, I wanted to do something with this coat of arms and this colour scheme in the Game of Thrones universe for the tabletop. And so, this is what this video is going to be all about. Now, this is my dad's side of the family. For my mum's side of the family, I might do that for the Starks um, and include it on that side, just so nobody shouts at me. But I hope you enjoy the idea um, and let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing that struck me about these minis were that they came pre-assembled or pre-printed, however you want to describe it, and the quality is really solid. I dropped a few of them and they didn't break. The detailing is insanely good for the sort of scale that they're in, and yeah, so I began by priming them. As you may be able to see here, I didn't, I wasn't able to fully prime them because I ran out of primer, but Fortunately, the material, whatever it is, paint sticks down to really, really well, and I plan to varnish it all at the end so that it shouldn't like rub off with use. Um, and it's only sort of minor areas that didn't get primed. So to begin with, I gave everything a blue coat on the tabards. I used Vallejo's Ultramarine Blue, and just one or two thin coats was more than enough to build up to the saturation that I wanted. Next, I came in with Vallejo Game Colors Sun Yellow to start freehanding out the cross sections for the coat of arms. Because I'm using yellow, it covers notoriously badly. I knew that this step was going to take several coats or glazes, and so I wanted to get this started. In between each step, I go over and recoat everything. In the end, it took about seven or eight um, glazed layers to sort of build up any sort of consistency or color coverage, but the end result is, I think, quite nice. All the details preserved because I'm using very, very thin coats. Following this step, I used a mix of Vallejo Earth and Vallejo Terracotta to create a ready brown leather. This is my go-to sort of leather recipe as it's quite a nice, rich brown. I used this to cover the boots and the scabbards of all of the models. After this, I came in with Vallejo Gunmetal on all of the metal bits, except for the blade of the sword, which I did in Vallejo Air Silver. This was to add some contrast and sort of make the blade stand out from the rest of the shoulder pads. Normally this wouldn't be an issue because Lannister men have gold armour and silver blades, but I wanted a bit of contrast here. For the undercoat and the sort of puffy sleeves, I came in with Green Stuff World's acrylic color Dark Umber and applied this over those details and the trousers above the boot that you can see. For the belts and pouches that all of them have around their waists, I came in with Vallejo's Leather Brown as a sort of lighter toned brown than the boots. Again, adding a bit of contrast and the colour sort of matches very well between the yellow and the blue. For all the skin tones on the model, quite a lot of these guys have open visors so that you can see the face and they all aren't wearing gloves. I mixed Vallejo's khaki with a touch of Vallejo dead white 
to create a very pale skin tone and applied this to the hands and the face. Later on, I was planning to wash these with Agrax Earthshade to sort of ruddy them up a bit and then come back in with highlighting. But in the end, I just didn't because you can't really see them when they're on the movement tree. You can't see the detail on the faces, especially when you're looking from a higher angle. The hands also, I hit with a wash of Norn Oil later and that brings out the detail just fine. Moving on from this, the next step was to apply gold to all of the the lions on the chest and the shields so that it would stand out against the background. I couldn't do the basic sort of quartering the, the lion because the detail was just too small unfortunately but I was able to do this on the banner which I'm going to sort of show in the full steps that I took there. Again, I began by roughing out the quarters with the yellow, blocking it in, and sort of setting up ready to start glazing everything. I then filled in the blue sections with the blue, and slowly started to build up that yellow. This took about two hours, and eight or nine different glazes to bring the yellow up. It's still in areas sort of spatchy, but later on I cover those with metallics anyway. The next step was to quarter the lion itself. The blue went down just fine over the yellow and it covered it completely. Unfortunately you can't put the yellow over the blue because it makes green and it doesn't show up properly. To counter this I first covered the areas with Vallejo's Stonewall Grey. This is my go-to intermediary step if I'm changing from a dark colour to a light colour or to a colour with weak coverage such as yellow as this is one of the sort of off-whites that I've found just covers really well in two coats, sometimes even one, and it's really strong and just gives you a nice, fresh slate to start from. So I then started to glaze the yellow over this white. In hindsight, I probably should have done all the yellow areas with this first because the white underneath gives such a punch to the vibrancy of the yellow, but that's a skill that I've learned for next time. With that, the painting of the individual models are done. I just really wanted to take a break from Games Workshop and Warhammer 40k specifically for a bit and sort of branch out into other areas of the miniature tabletop hobby which is really what this is and the fantasy setting is something that has always fascinated me and I would love to paint it a bit more and hopefully this game is the way I can do that. Next is basing. And in the A Song of Ice and Fire miniature game, everything is on movement trays. You get 12 infantry people or 4 cavalry on a movement tray. So I really needed to base these guys in a way that would be cohesive with the other units in the squad, but also the movement tray itself. For this, I elected to use Geek Gaming's base ready mix. This is Tiger Hillside and is a very, very high concentration of static grass with some rocks and stuff. Perfect for a fantasy scene. This is a fantastic sort of product, as it is as easy as they say. Glue it, dip it, dry it, done it, or something along those lines. I applied the fast drying basing glue rather than normal PVA. My understanding is this sort of dries from the inside out rather than the outside in, so it doesn't shrink back as much and sort of ruin the basing material. So I applied that and then for the individual people I could just dip them in the Tupperware box that I've got but for the movement tray that didn't really work um, so I had to sort of sprinkle it in. Very quickly realized that static grass will stick to my fingers so I elected for the super ultra high-tech option of an IKEA plastic spoon. This worked out really well I had to be really careful not to base over the vision lines in the base and the arrow that says where forward is. These will be painted in a darker colour later once the basing stuff has dried, but I forgot to film that for this video. So with that, all that is left now is to paint rims on a black rim on the movement tray and 
brown rims on all of the individual models so that they sort of blend into the background a little bit better off the movement tray. So I'm really happy with the end result. This is my family in Game of Thrones. Now this game does have a series of character models such as Rob Stark, Catelyn Stark, Sansa Stark, Cersei and Jaime and I will take the time when I'm painting those to push those extra details. But for now, the base infantry, all they need is just this simple paint scheme. I'm not fussed too much about them being super in detail because nobody's really gonna get down and look when you have two or three of these trays on the table. And really the ones they're gonna look at are those characters. So I hope you enjoyed this sort of different video. Let me know what you think. If you would like to see me paint some more of the Song of Ice and Fire miniatures, I'm more than happy to you know film that and do that. Let me know in the comments down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. If you really enjoyed it and you want to see more of me, please subscribe. It helps me massively sort of know what I'm doing is beneficial or good or what people want to see. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.